Howdy folks, we are back here again to continue our top three choices for if we only had our three pocket knives for the rest of the time. But to kick things off, let's go through what we're carrying today. Paul? Uh, today I've got a uh, little piece of pocket jewelry or hip jewelry in a Damascus and Stag um, fixed blade, as well as cold steel highlight because it's awesome. And it's the S30, S30V, S35. S35. Yeah. S35. Yeah, new version for 2018. That's what makes it the new hotness. I love it. Brand yeah. new 2018 S35. Step uh, up from XHB. You saw yeah. it in part one. Yeah. Aluminum That's handles on that guy. Yeah, I enjoy that. Very nice. Mm -hmm. All right, today I'm carrying once again my Benchmade Crooked River. Second time in a row, I'm going to yeah, say it's yeah. not in this list. It's nope. not. It, nope, it is not. It feels so good in my hands, which means it should feel yeah. good in Nigel's oh, hands. Oh, it feels wonderful in my hands, but it's not on my list, yeah, so it goes away for now. <laughs> that is mildly upsetting. <laughs> mildly. I am snapping out the Benchmade North Fork this week. I've uh, been carrying that one for the last little while. It's been making me really, really happy. Yeah, it's a nice little weekends. one for sure. Yeah, it's yeah. a weekend beat up knife for sure. What's with the, uh, the, the scratches there on the blade? Uh, me beating it up. Oh. I was going through things I shouldn't have gone through. I like but, it. Yeah, yeah. There's... Yep, it's a user. It's exactly it. Um, and then they just announced the overall knife of the year was Jesper Voxnase's new knife from Fox Knives. So I figured I'd break out of the Jesper Vox design. It's the Boker Gnome, and I love the little gnomes. They're fun. They're wee little pocket knives you can throw in. The little sheath is fantastic to stuff yeah. in your pocket. Such a cute classic little knife for sure. It's awesome. Joe? All right. And for myself today, discontinued Cold Steel Paradox. It is one of their more interesting models for sure. <laughs> it is my favorite slip joint. Yeah. <laughs> I would on Joe to break out the DD plates. Like we were in seeing the Phoenix last week, and now mm. you're dropping a Paradox for just your EBC. Just yeah, yep, just cause. This knife will take your finger if you don't care. <laughs> from. Okay, it's sure um, well. I'm actually kind of happy. You can hear it like. Yeah. Yeah. And. In deep in the pocket, I've been carrying it even without a pocket clip. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that one's been out of your pocket for a while because of no pocket clip, but yeah. it's still fun to carry, right? We were just talking about this earlier, and you didn't even mention you were carrying it. <laughs> so, yes, nice, little, nice little surprise. Cool, cool. Alrighty. So, on with the continuation of what the three knives were. We got number two for me. Right, moving on to Dennis. Number two for me, and <laughs> I, I, you're probably going to guess what everything is from this point <laughs> on, because there's knives that have just set the bar higher than other knives in the collection, mm -hmm. and that makes yes. the slint. Yes, yep. it had to be here. The knife, and I don't care that the pocket clip is on the face side, because I'm <laughs> left-handed, and it makes the face look gross. I wish it was on the other side. I don't know. I like the mechanical look of this thing. And, I mean, seriously, that I don't, I don't know why people seem to have, like, a, a hatred for this. I think it looks gorgeous. Either either side. I will not be parting with this knife anytime soon. Just yeah. for anyone who wants to post things in the comments, the numbers better be yeah. outrageous for me to even think about getting rid of this bad boy. How do you like that uh, wire clip? I love it. I love the wire clip. Oh my goodness. You've been I thinking about that for a while. Man, as, as far as Spyderco goes, I'll take, like you say, the over the top, and I like the over the top because of the no screw factor. Yeah. And there's no screw in there, so there's nothing to get in the way, but there's nothing to get in the way. Like the screws, it's high enough, it's out of the way enough and it's, that it's chambered and sloped. You don't have to worry about it as yeah. much. And they're kind enough to put a screw on either side so I can wear it left Yay. hand. Um, <laughs> Something for you lefties. Pure That's titanium sloped. frame lock. XHP for the steel, which is the same thing in Nigel's Chaparral, and that's where I can attest to the use and the whatever is, because I've had this knife for, I'm going to say, eight or nine months, maybe even close to a year now. And, and it feels amazing. Touched up the edge a couple times just to keep it extra keen, but other than that, it's, it's smooth as smooth can be. Why this knife makes top three for the rest of your life, easily hands down, is its construction. You can take this smart knife simple. apart a million times. You can put it together a million times. Similar construction, right? Similar. Screws and you got ball bearings. 
in there. I'll give you that. I got yeah. bronze washers. I'll give you that. And so even that, like, I love the ball bearings and I love what they do. And, and it is slightly smoother. I haven't quite nano-oiled it enough enough to drop, but I can kind of get the shake drop if I, I try type of thing. Like, it's, yeah, you can get it to close. Um, and it's Spidey Flex. Yeah, titanium slightly contoured here for the to give you a little more round on the top. You know, it's yeah. Would it know. Spidey Flex for a righty? Yes. Mm -hmm. People can do it, but they complain about it. Yes, this is exactly what I was about to say. I've actually heard complaints and seen complaints online about people saying, "Oh, it's impossible to do." Guys, watch. It's not hard. Well, it's not hard with enough practice, and I've messed around with enough spider codes. No, I think I think they designed this well enough that you can get your finger in there and you, you can shake it open. And now, if you've got like fat little fingers, maybe that's different for you. But uh, you have oh, to put there in. You a, go, there you go. There you go. Now, a little bit of something going it, on. It's not so much like well, I mean, you still need wrist flick with this yeah, guy. but that guy's a lock back, so it's or no, it's not the ball bearing. Lock, yeah. So it's always a resistance. Sorry. There, is, um, it's the same kind of resistance. And on the flip side, to like reviewers saying that you couldn't get it into rave wrist flick and I'm not going to try it right now because yeah, yeah. anyway um, but, but it, it's possible as far as the lefty goes I've also heard a reviewer saying that he didn't like this knife because unless you were good at finger flicking you wouldn't enjoy this knife as a, as a lefty so get better at finger flicking and I've owned this knife <laughs> I've owned this knife for a year and I love to be some spider flicking. Like, yeah. you can do this knife all day. I annoy Nigel on a regular <laughs> basis with how much I spider flick this. You and I, I think, are pretty bad for playing with our knives. And, but... and the lock sound that that, like, it should appreciate matter. that crack. It, it really shouldn't matter, but it does, and it sounds awesome. How are you liking the CTS XHP? Like I said, people keep comparing yeah. it to D2. I've got D2. Um, I'm going to put it in an S35 realm, and I keep saying it's... it's... Well, I mean, jeez, you look at the polish you put that thing on. I mean, it's not like as crazy as some of the other knives you've had. I but... haven't reprofiled this one in any way. This is, thing on. This is yeah. factory edge that I've literally just stropped ridiculously to actually almost convexing it. It's... <laughs> Apparently, there's a game now. Spin Seriously. the Sliz. Sleesh? Sleesh? Sleesh. Have I said yet? I it's the Sleesh Bowie. It's the Sleesh Bowie from okay. Spider Co. Is it actually the Sleesh? Sleesh. Sleesh? Sleesh yeah. or Slish? Sleesh? Sleesh. Slish? It could be Slish. I'm sorry, Mr. Sleesh. Slish. Uh, Marcin? Marcin? I don't know. Yeah, he makes a wonderful knife, let me tell you. And this isn't the only one on my radar. Techno 2 is coming out, and it's going to town with me, let me tell you. We're going to go see that before super the end excited of the year. For that knife. And, uh, um, the important thing I wanted to say, though, with this, is even though you can't spidey flick this all that easily from right-handed, it pops open with your thumb. Super easy, it does not matter. Yeah. Yeah. Did you tend to super appropriate for this knife? I think it was 100%. I think it was awesomely well, well, awesomely well put together. Um G10 backspacer, though. G10 backspacer, but the cool thing about it is it actually has steel tubes. Oh, thank goodness. In between this, the no. G10 backspacer that are both threaded for either screw to go into. So it's, it's oh, okay, so it's a bit different than having like a. Uh, cargo screw or something like that. Well, yeah, where we have like a male and female part that are coming together. It's two, two threaded it's bits two, going into it. It's two females. That's kind with of. With the two screws that go into it. That's neat because that means you're going to allow. And I mean, this isn't really going to matter in a knife that's this simply constructed, but you're going to be able to adjust tension on all those screws separately. I kind of like that. And in theory, I could try it. I haven't tried it because I like the way it looks, but you could take that backspacer out completely and have an open construction with just barrel screws because you can pop the steel are tubes. The, so the screws are, or the, the tubes are large enough that they're not going to allow slip through the holes yep. on the scale. That's... Yeah. I didn't know that, and now I'm very interested to see what that would look like in a flow through construction. I, yeah, I don't want to risk it because I like the construction. <laughs> what it is. Again, three that, guys for that's the rest fair. of your life. I, I'm going to make this one last by leaving it the way it is, right? So you're looking at oh, like not going like through. Yeah, maybe like three and a quarter cutting, mm -hmm. three and a half blade total. Yeah. And overall? Oh, overall, you're looking at just under eight, like seven and a quarter. Or seven and three quarters, sorry. Seven and three quarters? Yeah. yeah. So you got way more handle than, than blade on this guy. The ratio's not quite a one-to-one -one on this guy. But you know what? I don't know when that was ever... I don't know how you could reasonably expect that a lot of the time. Any guesses on this leash? I'm not going to... I'm going to say five and a half. No, it's not that heavy. Four. 
Four point two. Yeah. I was just saying well, about titanium. Yeah. Four point two three. No, it's slim. It's oh, well balanced. Can we? It's not uh, skeletonized in any way. It's can we just... talk about the contouring though? And the skill required to be able to contour that so beautifully, beautifully nice that it, it, it just oh, here. makes me happy in all sorts of fantastic ways. Show the top here. You can kind of see the curve getting thinner, larger, and smaller. It, a beautiful thing, which, honestly, I wasn't expecting from Spider-Co in this capacity, and it turned out amazing. They did, they did a really excellent job breaking that edge along as well, so... For the size, I expected more hotspots. I have not found any for the time that I've messed around with yours and uh, another friend of mine. It's a really nice one. knife. And sometimes I'm very critical of flat palmed knives. I like a rounder knife sometimes, and even though they talk about it twisting in the hand and things like that, I still find a lot of flat. Like your STS from the last episode, I find it kind of pinchy in the hand because of how flat it is. Yeah, but the, this guy here, I can feel like I can, I can torque on this with like heavy duty work if I need to and different context of use though, right? Like that thing's designed mm -hmm. like that yes. as yeah. a fighting knife. Yeah. This is not your go to fighting knife. Speaking of which, we haven't yes. dabbled on the last week's episode of S T S and we told you guys that we were gonna find out the the definition. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's SEAL Team Six. I believe you are correct. After investigating and knowing what the knives do, I believe it's STS, it's SEAL Team 6. If we're wrong, correct us in the uh, comments. Um, also makes me laugh that you got four Canadian boys sitting around a coffee table talking about knives, and none of the Canadian boys know what SEAL Team 6 is. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't here last episode. Yeah, complete ignorance. No excuse. Hey, <laughs> fine, fine, fine. So... Um, holy grail again for a lot of people out there. Holy. I've I've had a lot of people offer me some good money for that, and I'm not ready to part ways with it because I just enjoy it way too much. I'm looking Shocking. forward to the day that somebody lets me uh, edit it. The popularity um, no. has exploded. I'm not saying you. No, I'm not saying you, but I have been in conversation with somebody else at one point if, about if, the possibility. If you like. Paul's anodizing. He's got a ZT there, by the way. He's got a pretty purple on it. If you want this to be the pretty purple that he's got there, he can do that for you, even though he thinks it's blue. <laughs> it was blue. I kind of wish that I had gotten some kind of texture on here. Anyway. Look on the inside. Yeah. Yeah. Look on the inside of the, uh, the handle. It's blue. All right. All right. Um, I Beautiful love it. Life. We could talk forever about this list. Yeah. But yeah. on to Nigel's. Um, I was about to reveal my number two. Which was the cute, classy little Uncusta. Don't see enough of those around. No, we do not. And again, out of all of the <laughs> knives that Nigel picks and fitting his hand because he's Mr. Extra Large Monster Hands, you, you get something that's barely a three finger grip for me, without, let alone. Without a pocket clip. Without a pocket clip. Yeah, but it's do... such a perfect little three finger grip. And. The reason why I had this little monkey ball on here is because it has no pocket clip, I tend to carry it in my little change pocket, and I'll tuck that into my belt loop, and then that way, in case it does slip out of the change pocket, it doesn't fall. It's caught on something. And I can't help but notice you called it the monkey ball instead of oh, the monkey, monkey fist. fist. But, yes, yes. You know, <laughs> <laughs> monkey ball. They're both the same size. So <laughs> Super monkey ball. Game cube. Great game. Not what we're talking about. No. <laughs> um, VG1 or VG10 for the Blade uh, Steel? I believe it was VG10. It was. Yeah. In I don't even know how many layers. I can't remember. Um, Sixty something? Hundred and twenty something? No, it was. Uh, I want to say like it was like a shun type of thing where it was like a thirty-four layer. Yeah, layer. It was thirty-four. You can see the layers pretty clear. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I guess viewers at home, if you'd like to pause and count, I mean, <laughs> be my guest. Have fun uh, with that. <laughs> ebony for the handle. Yep. Yep. It was ebony on the handle. Which is um, so cool. It. Did have a little bit more of a heat patina at the back end here. Um, just a little bit of the straw yellow into the purples left. Um, that's just rubbed off with time and carrying it. And that was from factory. They did yes. that heat patina yeah, yeah. anodizing thing. Okay, so that was an intentional thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that was yeah. from factory how it came sort of thing. That was yeah. the one thing I was going to pick up and be like, what's this? I've seen two yeah. or three of those, and they all had that really, really cool mm -hmm. kind of almost like fishtail Anodizing yeah, and it's yeah. really, cool. really pretty straight from the factory. But yeah, just over time, and especially because I put the the lanyard thing on there, the paracord rubbing on it has done yeah. a pretty good job of rubbing it off. Still shimmers nice. Oh yeah, I have to say, fat little blade. Um, yeah, I, I dig it, but it's definitely wider than I would have expected. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, let's. I didn't even see that. Yeah. See just how wide it is there. 
Up to the camera there. <laughs> <laughs> I like the sound effects. Built in, yeah. Sound yeah. effects. Yeah. 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 All righty, so you can get a good shot there. Point one two five, one two four. And on the tip, I'm curious how much it tapers, just just because we're having. Yeah, the yeah, it stays right pretty now. thick right up until about the belly of it. But once it does start tapering out up to the tip, we're sitting at a point oh three nine yeah. down from point one two five. Wow. <laughs> so yeah, that does taper a fair bit. But very, very abruptly. Yeah, yeah, very abruptly from right, right there, there down. Yeah, you can yep. see basically where this, this grind here stops is where the taper starts. So you got this mm -hmm. much to taper with at that point, right? So uh, why the number two out of the entire collection? Um, kind of basing it on ease of use and fun to play with as compared to the Chaparral. A little more fun, a little more, yeah, yep, yeah. Yeah, I like the slimmerness or the slim lineness to the blade and whatnot. Um, super, super comfy, perfect little three finger grip for me there. It's just okay. a comfy little knife. And we're going to have a conversation like after this is over about <laughs> big knife choices compared to small knife choices because I want to mm -hmm. understand where Nigel's big <laughs> knife choices do not come into play on this. And yep, so I, we'll have that as an after conversation. Yep, yep, I've thrown you all for a loop with Very these much ones so. for sure. Um, <laughs> mildly upsetting is an understatement. <laughs> You know what? I recently, like, well, not recently, in the last couple of years, passed on a Macusta, and I honestly wish I hadn't. I really want one. Yeah, they're, they're fun great little, little gems of nice for sure. There's a number of models that are pretty good for that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So yeah, All right. moving on. Does that sum up number twos? All I believe the board? so. Board, yeah. We got number ones that we're playing with now. Yep. Number one. This is next. number one pick. If you had one knife to choose, what knife would you choose? D one. You would. Out of your collection. Because yep. there's some wish list stuff. But anyway. Yes. Joe's turn. To <laughs> we're gonna throw it, it to off. Joe. We're gonna yeah. <laughs> For the viewers at home, again, you may, you're you not going to know what my number one pick is, but everybody else here does. It's obvious from what he showed yes. us already, from what he's We know exactly play. what this yeah. is. Dramatic reveal. Ba -ba -ba -bum. Sabenza, 21, with Cocobolo inlays. Deceiving Cocobolo inlays. They look like, like ebony I because I have terrible skin, but... <laughs> and he, it's his regular carry. Oh man, it's been two, it's been over two and a half years that I've been carrying this every single day. That's this awesome. truly is my EDC. I've tried mm. with other knives to knock it out of the pocket, but this keeps coming back. Every time, I don't care how many knives we say Joe carries on a regular basis, the Sabenza is on him 24-7. Yep. It's <laughs> a always staple. And that's the knife that he's reaching into his pocket to like cut something with and things yep. like that nine times at a time too, you know what I mean? He's I've not seen nice the Thailand come out to play too, because I've also got one of those. <laughs> EDC well, out, yeah. It's funny, the only way that I can get other knives into my pocket is if, like, there's a back pocket carry, and then this is the primary, <laughs> just so that I can trade off between the two. Um, mm -hmm. This has been pretty heavily used and abused. I'm sure you can see all the marks and the scratches and the gunk. Uh, I've dropped this before, unfortunately, but, I mean, lockup is perfect. Centering is perfect. Action is hydraulically yep. smooth. It's just butter. It's awesome. Built to last. You've worked it in beautifully. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um... I, we've seen brand new ones out of the box. I've played with them. They're gummy. I don't like being out a lefty box, like as well. We, That's another thing. Nigel and I mm -hmm. need to finger flick because, I mean, you can thumb flick and it's getting fine, right, when you're doing that on a regular basis. Yeah. But as a lefty, you do have to finger flick unless you get a, I can't remember, 25 with the dual thumb spins. Yeah. And when you do, this one does snap pretty nice. And I've seen some ones that I really struggle to new get one. a nice finger flick on, right? Like new it's, out of the box. And I think this is just a testament to how well uh, CRK tends to finish their stuff. But I'm thinking it's... Jesus. It's, the... <laughs> it's my first day. Oh, it really wow. is. I give up. <laughs> but I step give up. away from the cement. Yeah, I'll tell you when you're going to do it. Wow. Which is great. The texturing on the washers and on the inside of the scales, I think that's adding a little bit of grip. I think that smooths out over time. And yet, yeah, there we go. Uh, and now, the ball can excellent. Still a struggle. Yeah. <laughs> so, still on the wish list, I can't wait to put mm -hmm. some ends in my collection and probably give some of these a run for their money. Just for the fact of the precision of the build and the staple of the name, what he's done for the knife community and the world and the innovativeness of it, it's... You, you need a Chris Reeves in your collection. One day. 
Well, I need to make more. It's kind of like needing a K bar. Like it's yeah. just so historically significant for what it is. The Reeve Integra lock, the frame lock, like mm-hmm. that was his brainchild. And I mean, it, it's yes, it's derivative of the line lock, but yeah. I think I think it was an important step forward because and, look at where the market is today. And for the last years upon years upon years, we've seen the Sabenza come out. I've played with hundreds of Sabenzas, and at the end of the day. It's all like, yeah, they're a beautiful Sabenza. Mm-hmm. I've never played with a non-beautiful Sabenza. Like no. it's uh, the fit and finish on them are so so consistent Across compared to every yeah. other company we're gonna look at on our table tonight. That you have to give the man props for you know what why he has the claim to fame, right? Exactly. And, and it's and, and, and he will the flipper evidently. <laughs> people, people will complain about price point, but. But it's been stable. At the same time, it's been yeah. It's, it's a stamp of reliability that is worth its weight in gold. Mm-hmm. And if you watch the, uh, if you watch the uh, some of the shop tour videos of like all the work that goes into the machining, uh, Chris Reeve is pretty intense about making sure that his knives are certain before they leave. And I know the company mm-hmm. structured a little bit differently today, but even so, the quality control is just top notch. One thing I'd like to mention before we move on, the one thing I love about this knife that I don't have on any other knife. All of these screws, including the pocket screw, take the same bit to change. I only need one pull to disassemble this knife. That's, that is a nice little touch for sure. And it kind of bothers me that some companies like will give me different sized screws. And I'm sure oh, everything will be at least two different sizes. Yeah. And Makucha might be the one because it's generally so it might be small. No, oh, no, even the biggest screws. <laughs> yep, yep. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, that's just um, a, it's such a small thing, but that for me is a big thing. Yeah, no, that is definitely a nice touch for sure. And I think every other number one, we're gonna ask why they're the number one. It, for the most part, but there's no question why it's a number one. Yeah, it is <laughs> the collection. user. It is the user gem of my collection. Yeah, one hundred percent. So, all right, brother. Alrighty. Moving on. That bad boy off to the side and and. It's me now. Go. Yes, it is. All right, and we we know what this is. Well, we, we at the we, table know. That's what I'm saying. We know what this you, is. I don't think you presented this because you've been all greedy on your PVT over the last three years yeah. as an EVC. So <laughs> so. The ZT 452 CF in carbon fiber, yeah, with nice a one. little bit of uh, modification by me. Let's 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 I'll splash that up. Oh, of course, it's a sexy splash. Yep, I like it. Sure is. I'm uh, I'm quite happy with the way that one turned out. It turned out really nice, man. Just move it around here so you can see it shimmering, changing the lights on. When you've had a hand yeah. in altering a knife, production or not, I mean, it's hard not to put it into your. Well, but when you take into account the fact that that knife also spent. Um, every day in my pocket for about two, two and a half years. This is almost yeah. as consistent as when I say yep. about Joe with his Semenza. Easily. It's almost as consistent and, that I can say that you have this in your pocket. And this is the third, other things. Exactly. And this is the third iteration that I've had. It's been two other colors before this. I had it flame anodized at first. Then I had a dirty bronze. Yeah, I've seen this thing go. And when <laughs> I talked about the teal with your, I was totally getting it confused with this one yeah. from the last episode. Because you've done... So many crazy things yeah. with this knife. And it's probably going to continue. I'm probably going to end up doing something else with this eventually. But I love the way it looks right now. Yeah, can't it's, wait. looks good. It's a, a nice fade between the colors. Okay, so what do we got in the steel? Uh, that's S35VN in the steel. It's about four inches in length. Were they all S35 or was it something oh, different? I did type that down. Do what you need to. With, yes, I'm just in regards to... Right now. Uh, as far as blade steel, were they always S35 or were they like an LMAX or a 204P or a... I think they were always... I, I don't know. This yeah, is I one think thing they were always S35. There was, there was an initial uh, sprint run years ago. This knife was first introduced. Or okay. was, it a diff- was it a different number? No. It had the D2 uh, Sandvik. Yes, it's and the based D2 off of a three-piece laminate, seven. which yeah. was a D2 Sandvik steel D2. It's which 454. predated this guy, actually. Yes, it okay. did. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, for sure. But in this iteration, it's always been an S35. I'm pretty sure. For I the, don't. I don't know. I'm gonna have to stat check that one because I kind of think it might be something different. Yeah. But yeah, for the 452. Um, Was there ever? I know this guy changed. Yeah, yeah, and I know they had their changes throughout the years, right? But um, was there ever a 452 without the CF previous to the release that had the, just the recent one? That had uh, titanium. I think it was the mini. The new release, they've got a G10, they've got a titanium, they've got a blue G10 or a blue titanium. Okay. But the original mm-hmm. release was a CF, yeah, which was the yeah. version only. Okay, well I guess we're gonna have to do some digging to find out. I gotta more. say, the one really nice thing about carrying a nice carbon fiber knife in your pocket for a long while, the polish you get on that 
Yes. Carbon fiber just deepens yeah. as it sits yeah. in your pocket. It's so nice. That was, I have to say, That's yes, fancy. especially, and for some reason with ZT knives, I know I keep bringing this back up, but you get a nice smooth polish the longer that thing stands. That's not exclusive yeah. to, to ZT, no. and no. we'll bring that up along the way for sure. Yeah. Um, so number one pick that you've got number one your pick, collection. By far, pocket time. It's been in my pocket mm-hmm. basically You're, since I bought it. You're sharpening S35. How many times have you sharpened S35? Um, I've only really touched this blade up. I'm going to be completely honest. This one it was a bit of a pocket queen for me for a long while. Yeah. Until I started getting other things in my collection that, you know, were at the same level. This one's now just recently started coming out and playing more yeah. often. Yeah. Like we mentioned that it's in his pocket just as much as Joe Sabenz is in his pocket. This one's not a hard user like the Sabenz is for Joe. Which which is, that's it. Which, I always yeah. carry something else. Which is kind of that funny because <laughs> I know... Guys in the forums are screeching at me for using my stuff, <laughs> yeah. stuff, but I know not everybody's like that. But now yeah. I have a question of hand size because Nigel has the mm-hmm. largest yeah. hand. It is just a smidgen tight, but it's comfortable. Like I can't it's... believe that's tight on you. <laughs> Which is ridiculous. Just just a smidgen tight. Yeah, yeah, yeah like yeah. just just like an eighth of an inch. Okay, and we've established that I'm kind of the medium out thicker. <laughs> I'm, I'm the smallest hand here. Joe and Charlie. Paul, you've still got a smaller hand. Yes, smaller yes. Yeah. And, and for you, it doesn't hang off the back too much, still being your number one pick. That's it. I um, save or gra- hold this a lot, thumb up the back. See, I, I like this so, knife like this. I'm curious about So, like, I'll hold it a lot like here. that. And, yeah. I mean, I'm not that far off on the back. You're not. You're you not. Don't. Which you is, got room, though. Which is, yeah, I got room on both sides. Which yeah. is kind of funny that it still fits grip good, whereas Nigel's got... An inch wider in width. I think it's because we're dealing with such a straight handle here. And like, if I <laughs> choke up in a hammer grip, I can get it to hang off a little bit, mm-hmm. for sure. And but this knife really is meant to sit into this yeah. gimping right there. They tell you where to put your thumb, <laughs> type of idea. Even the, the shape it. of the the back of the spine tells you where to put your hand. Mm-hmm. What mm-hmm. if you like grip back on it like that? So, you and I. Um, our number one picks are both the S35. I'm curious to see what these guys have chosen for their steels. S35, yeah, yeah. I mean, um, you're going to have to bear in mind that steel choice is one option in many, many variables it is. when it yep. comes to... Of course. VG10 versus... S90 pocket, did not make it. Nice pocket number carry, one, right? lightness, heaviness. I've, I've got some favorite steels, and some of them came to play in my list, and some of them didn't. So I'm very yep. interested. I'm happy to see this as your number one, though. It's, yeah, it's a good like choice. Like I said, I love this knife. And flip it over one more time for the anodizing, just to show guys exactly, oh, yeah. bring it up to the camera, what they're getting for Paul. He's playing with his anodizing. He's still fairly new at it, but he's pretty I'm rock getting, solid on it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And like I said, we're going to experiment, and the week-to-week videos are going to have a new color every week from something for me, I'm hoping, <laughs> I'm hoping <laughs> for a while. It'll be fun. It'll be fun. Indeed. Yeah. All right, brother. So. Awesome. That's it. Moving on, then. Nigel, dump to the dumb, <laughs> like drum roll, can we get some chopsticks so we can mini drum roll, what the hell he might have underneath his number one day. <laughs> so, the big reveal, the big reveal for me... It is. Oh! It's it the sequel. Is. Nice. <laughs> it's a nice little knife. My 2017 uh, Benchmade Shot Show sequel. It is such a cute little knife. I love it this is. guy. And, so and comfy. A fantastic touch of class in mm-hmm. every level when it comes to that knife. Look at that. Yeah. Like that blue and the fluting. Yes. Oh, I'm a sucker for fluting, especially in aluminum scales like this. And if you want to throw it back on the table, just so we can get a close-up, it is limited... Wait, oh. hang on. Hang yeah, on. Yeah. <laughs> limited edition number. What are we working with, Nigel? Let's refresh my memory there. <laughs> 459 is the number I have. Out of 1,000, correct? Yeah, yeah, 1,000 for this guy. Oh, man. Normally, they're black aluminum, I believe. Yes. With not, a yeah. 154. Not blue, though. Yeah, it's mm. such a nice That's blue. That's yeah. So classy. It's a um, gorgeous little piece. Once again, it's a nice, comfortable little three-finger finger. knife for me. And again, a wee, a wee knife comes out to play for Nigel's top picks. And I was wondering <laughs> if this one was going to come out to play. It, it yeah, deserves yeah. spot it's, number one, I would say. It's a nice little knife. When it came to my own life choices on <laughs> knife choices, when it came to the top three, 
this was in the list of mm -hmm. get rid of this tier, get rid of this tier. Okay, I'm left with a final tier of beautiful knives. I own one of these myself because they're worth owning. If I had one of these, something else would have gotten knocked out. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I, love, I love you to say that. Uh, ben from HQ, this has been his EDC for it's been since blue. it came out. It's been blue. It's fingertip long. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, especially with your... It's like mess. It's a figure. Yeah. Okay, put it back on your heel. It's like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, if you're, I'm going like right, like going from my knuckle, yeah. like you're in danger of hitting going the tip way of your over. Yeah. He's in danger. Just full stop. Okay, on uh, <laughs> thickness, I want a spine and tip size. I'm very curious. Yeah, yeah. Because I, you can see the taper without so, even looking. So spine thickness is 0.104. And tip thickness is where'd it go there? And butt on point oh three Ooh. mills inch inch. Okay, Inches. can we go back to mills because that's what we had the last episode? No, well, sure. Sorry, no worries. We are Canadian, I suppose. We should be doing <laughs> well, you know, yeah. consistency yeah. at least. <laughs> <you> talking boot, eh? <laughs> boot. Don't so <laughs> two point seven two up at the back of the spine and yeah, hosers tip. We're bunch of hosers, eh? Point eight one. So it tapers wow. a mill. Yeah, yeah. That's it a... tapers more than the hinderer slicer tapers. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> well, that's not hard. No, <laughs> but just because that thing's tan, really. Well, yeah. yeah. Um, number one, okay, we're going to go back to the conversation of what else is in your collection that yes. didn't go on, but why yep. is this ultimately your number one out of everything? It is the nicest, classiest little pocket jewelry that I have out of my collection. And <laughs> as far as day-to-day -day life, if you were only given three, yep. your pocket knife choices or pocket jewelry? Essentially, if I'm in a world where I can rely on my fixed blades for any tough use choice. And hopefully this is a world where you don't get shit for just yes. wearing a fixed blade. Yes. Oh, yeah. yes, absolutely. But yes, if I'm in a world where I can rely on fixed blades for tough use choice, I am going to gentlemanly class the hell out of this world. <laughs> I like your answer. <laughs> absolutely. Right. Cheers. What's yeah. the steel on that? Uh, S30 already. in this guy. S30? Yes. Yep, yeah, so in all honesty... Fully usable. Yep, yeah, fully usable, but all honesty, the steel didn't play a choice. No. Because once again, if I'm in a world where I can play with my fixed blades and rely on those on for the hard use... That's where I'm going to be playing with the steels. 100%. We've, we've already but at had the same a time, it's episode. nice to have. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. We've had a Bark River episode. You can see the 3Vs and the A2s and the whatever come out to play. When it comes to gentlemanly class, this is what you get to do. Yep. Nigel's going to go out in class. Damn straight I am. Yeah, for sure. So that rounds up my top three. On to Dennis's. Well, before we do, oh. normal one was 154 CM. Yeah. yeah. That's, I do want to throw mm. that oh, in. Oh, S30 yeah, is yeah, yeah. definitely with a nice upgrade. aluminum, I still want an original one on my list so I can oh, carry yeah. it without feeling guilty. Yeah, I haven't ever actually carried mine because it is a shot show. Explosive. But in the world, you got one life to live. You might as well live it. Exactly. Well yeah, live I've, I've been tempted the last week or so here. <laughs> All right, on number number one carry, and I've carried it since it came out. It's been my my love, my life, my joy. It's the carbon fiber S ninety. It's the nine forty dash one with a deep. Carry How do you go wrong with a deep carry? Because it just made it extra better. Oh, it's like a second <laughs> honeymoon better. with this knife. I'm extra better you know. is important. To extra, extra, yeah. extra better. Bright blue. Yeah, nice bright blue barrel spacers Beautiful, there. Oh yeah. Very um, nice touch of style to it. 940. The regular 940 was my first Benchmade, and I have to say, I totally understand why you went with this knife. Uh, just just absolutely fantastic. Mm -hmm. And it comes down to Nigel's point of the pocket jewelry, but I'm going to step up my function to be just a little more hardcore with the materials. Well, yeah. S90 doesn't leave you wanting for very much. And, no. and the carbon fiber, the blue anodized aluminum, like this thing is so easy to clean out. You take a Q-tip and you run it through twice, and then this thing is... You, and the, you, I noticed oh, a little bit of a backspacer. Yeah, okay, not much, no, not much. As, as far as, would it be hard to clean? As far as function goes, this knife has been with me as much mm -hmm. as possible. I had a warranty issue; it had to go away for a while. And like I said, right now it's a second honeymoon. 
And there's no reason why that's still not my number one. Well, the, the warranty issue that you had and why it went away for a while is the only main reason why you've been playing with other knives and they've come <laughs> into a top three. Well, and, <laughs> uh, for a long time, I didn't even have the EDC Expanse that I have right now, like carrying a South Fork, carrying the 20CV Reptilian last week. Mm -hmm. My EDC rotation has changed. But for a good solid two years, my EDC rotation was, was this, this this knife. How could you go wrong? Mm -hmm. When I was working the warehouse, the regular S30 version was more than enough. I'm insanely jealous that this is your EDC. Um, it has to be. It has to be. If it's not in my pocket right now, it'll be my in my pocket in some variation just as awesome as this one. Important question. What is it weigh? Oh, we break up the scale. I want to say 2.4, but Benchmade always steps it up a notch or two on the weight. I've been watching no, no, a lot no, no. of reviews. You were right the first time. Stop questioning yourself, Paul. <laughs> you got it. What do we got on the in grams? 2.42. Mm -hmm. Holy crap. Wow, Benchmade got it right. Yeah. <laughs> I was watching the Contigo because we were so off on the Contigo the last time. <laughs> I was watching other Contigo's reviews, and they were getting 5.8 instead of 5.9 on their huh. reviews, too. So I'm not the only one that... Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. So yours is light. Huh. Uh, compared Contigo. to Benchmade specs. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, and honestly, small Contigo. So, I mean, in the real world, how awesome this knife makes me feel as a number three pick, it is because of how awesome this knife makes me feel as a number one pick. That same design. And then you can't yeah. argue, like, the usability of the Sleech Bowie, because this thing, take it apart a million times, put it together a million times, it's still the same knife, right? Mm -hmm. S90 is um, one of the best awesome edge-holding steels on the market. Indeed it is. It is a tough steel, but it keeps that edge awesomely. I noticed that you've also swapped uh, your... Uh, swift. swift. Yes, again! <laughs> Second week in a row! <laughs> swift! Uh, you're with the Swift. Your pivot. You switched the pivot to the opposite side. Um, on on my Osborne. Yeah. But that's because I'm a lefty and I'm disassembling it, and that's the way it ended up. I'm not and saying it, it was sense. biased. I've also worked on the centering. It's not beautiful centering. I was ignoring the centering because that's something that Benchmade <laughs> has, and it's not something I'm going to go into on this episode. Mm -hmm. We'll go into Benchmade centering on we'll a completely talk about that. Yeah. different we'll, episode. We'll discuss it. Because they have their quality control issues on centering, and this one's not the best centered in the world. But at the end of the day, for what I'm doing with it, EDC, cutting boxes open, centering doesn't matter. It's still easily... It's the classiest user that's probably come out so far. Uh, we've got some Benzes. I mean, I'll, I'll give you that. You step <laughs> up your steel choice on, on the yeah. steel, and this would give this a serious yeah. I'll give you that. The S30 I've got nice snobbery on. I don't know. I'm Just for the fact that this one has the kind of modified Warncliffe reverse tanto, I'm going to dispute the classy factor just because... People will recognize that sort of style more. This is a little I, more I, of a gentical. All yeah. I saw was and the I'm carbon gonna fiber. Throw the word, I'm going to throw out the word gentical. <laughs> if you don't know what it means, look it up. It's awesome. I don't know if I want to. It's, it's awesome. But <laughs> it's, anyway. it, it is what it sounds like. Yeah. yeah. Um, but before you put that away, though, I just yeah, wanted to... Sure. Oh, extra large hands. Well, extra large hands, but I also just oh. wanted to touch on the wearing of the carbon fiber, like yes. Paul had mentioned with his ZT there, and yeah, the, the Benchmade carbon fiber wears away awesomely as well. As far as the way it polishes, right on the middle seams where it sits in my pocket, where it sits on my hand, you can see a significant difference of a polish compared mm -hmm. to the two tapered sides on it. And, and that's something you don't see when you buy them out of the box. They are kind of dull on all sides, right? Um, and then one other thing we'll dabble on. As far as the next large hands, does it still fit in Nigel's hands? Yep, yep. I find this guy a little bit large of a three-finger knife, a little bit awkward for a four-finger. Um, so it's in between, but it's still not an uncomfortable knife? No, nope, no, nope, I just... still find it very comfy indeed. Okay. I know you're not this type of person generally. Is it kind of like a gunny handle? From the Bark River episodes, where it's kind of like, I Almost. should like it, but it's just, it's like... <laughs> no, no, I can, it's it's enough room for a three-finger knife that I can move back a little bit, and it's still comfy and as a three-finger knife. And when you're talking about a pocket knife, and you've got some yeah. three-finger grips, you're used to that on Yeah, yeah. Knife. Okay. I tend to hold my knives like this. Long yeah, more of a this. little bit of a pinch grip. Yeah. How does it feel for you? Would um, you use it in a pinch grip, or do you find that you'd really rather have that? Yeah, no, fist? and especially as you mentioned, the longer knife being in the pinch grip because of the longer of the blade, I probably would go a little pinch grippy. Just the for the record, well. Ben, as long as your finger from Blade HQ, um, <laughs> there's a couple of us where the Osborne is as long as our finger. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
Oh, we're going to do measurements now. <laughs> well, as far as the skinny goes. Indeed. Yeah. I mean, I got to choke back a little bit. You got a little bit of a tip sticking out, but it's... So, number one, because it is what it is, Mr. Osborne came up with this design in 2000. It has been a home run. It's 18 years old? It's 18 Jeez. years old. That was Jesus. the first one he came to. And then he had a whole bunch of variations that he's knocked out of the so park year after year. Like I said, with the Contigo, along with the King, man. Yeah, yeah. He, was a, the King. he was a wonderful designer. And so just to kind of show off the final choices that everyone had here. And I'm going to be a pain in the ass to do with this. But you, better, you better. Why wouldn't you? Fine, fine. <clears throat> No, that's you're weird. weird. <laughs> <laughs> Looks better that way. Yeah. Um, number one, ones across the board. Yeah, they're all wonderful knives. Yeah, I think, in my personal opinion, that's the one that I'd be leaning towards out of all of these four. If it's, I had to choose something other than the one I had. Yeah, the Spence is number one, man. Yeah. It's the next one. On my list. I'm, I'm super surprised that. S35, S35, S30, and then S90. Like I, I said, I'm just surprised. like I said, Steel Choice wasn't an option for me, or wasn't a consideration for me just because I'm relying on the fact that in this theoretical world of bars that I can still play with all the fixed plates I want, and that's where I'll play with steels. So. I'm, I'm going to be a dick and say that this is still going to be the number one pick for me, and your no. Semenza will be the number two because... My Osborne, the way it carries, yeah. makes me so happy. Absolutely. Can I just say, though, that I want all of them? Yes. <laughs> I would like yeah. one yeah. of each, please. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. for well, sure. And the funny thing is, I've considered, well, shit, I've owned <laughs> an original 940. I've considered the sequel after getting my hands on a McHenry Williams, for full size. I've obviously got a Sabenza, and this was the first ZT I ever fell in love with. So, I mean, and I think we all really do like these knives for one reason or another. They are all fantastic little knives for sure. If you, yes, if you guys little. out there in YouTube land, yeah. if you can find a sequel, even one of the standard ones, you should jump on it. Um, I've kind of kicked myself at not picking up a standard edition. It is past. it is very easily the knife that's worth picking up that's underrated in the mm -hmm. benchmade catalog. And it's does no the black have the same flute? No. no. If, if it had the flute, I'd like, still buy it. It's yeah. got like a, a round... Um, Almost like checker a pattern in the middle of the aluminum, and then it's flat on kind of the corners. Of kind of similar to the Gertillion. Okay. Yeah. That, yeah. 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 Like yeah, gunstock yeah. kind of but style. This mm -hmm. size and just classy. Yeah. yeah. For sure. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Awesome picks on number ones. Mm -hmm. For sure. Um, you can't have my. I want my number one <laughs> until the day I die. Oh, I don't yeah. want yours. I want one of my no. own. No. <laughs> <laughs> I can't have them. And no, you can't have it. <laughs> you have to buy another variation so we can't clash, right? So. Yeah. Honorable mentions. And yeah. I'm the only guy that hasn't gone first. So yeah, it's up to you for this round. My honorable mention is a knife that, man, again, three, four, five different picks on what was going to be my honorable mention. Yep. I Dennis have to was go. having the tough Yes, I have guys. to go with... The knife that made me a knife guy. Of course. Um, Same reason I picked the feet. We talked about this, yeah. It's a best made mini skirmish. And in the hand, I had some other contenders that might have fit slightly better in the hand than the mini skirmish. The full-size skirmish, as, as ridiculous as it is, um, a little short for the pistol grip. So for the quick little pokey factor that we're going to name drop here, um, it's okay. But for utility work, stuff like that, yeah, it's there's better grips. Tip down, eh? Tip down, left hand. Those old, old school boys. They knew what they were doing. <laughs> <laughs> sure uh, I, I don't care because I'm a lefty. So it actually, with tip down, it actually puts it in my pocket. Keeps the blade against the against seat. the yeah, seat yeah, yeah. of the pants, and it doesn't inflict on because it's sitting this way, right? Yeah. So lefty, it's that way. It's obnoxious to open and then turn and then flip and then use and then whatever. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't surprise me that it's the first knife that brought you into something else. Because this thing, as cool as it is, it still has problems that you're like, you know what? I want something that fixes this and fixes that. You know what I mean? And gets you out there and becoming a knife guy. It works up to the point where I've got this absolutely ridiculous collection of high-quality materials. Exactly. Like, Ten years ago, this is what brought me into the high-quality material. And it's still high. This is a grail knife. I was going to say. Almost yeah. as much, yeah. There's a there's a lot of people online who are constantly looking for one of these things because of how rare they are. Yeah. 
It would be fun to anonymize. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I have seen some very cool variations. Oh, I'm, not, I'm not asking. I would love but to it would see be fun. a different color per swirl. That'd be neat. I like some gray. <laughs> and, uh, and I Dennis is boring. Gray. Yeah, Dennis is boring. Yep. But it's, yeah, again, it was, and it was the, the version of the Sabenza that I could afford at the time. Right. Absolutely. How old is that knife? Um, oh, geez, man. I don't have a ton of info on the mini skirmish. I want to say 2008, 2009. Okay. Something like that. Like, it was it was discontinued, I believe, in 2010. Like, potentially the, the year after I got into this. And I was, like, introductory the first year, and I was playing with Kershaw's and CRKTs and got a Benchmade Red class from the Chinese stuff back in the day, and all of a sudden mm -hmm. this thing sat down and... It was my Christmas present to myself. Yeah. The first year I started in, like being serious into knives. What's the blade steel? S30. Nice. It's an S30. <laughs> it's still tried true. And like I said, back in the day with the Sabenzas with the S35, they were S30. So titanium, Reeve, integral lock, like it was just a styly, cool version of a Sabenza that I could afford yeah. at the time. I see people asking, has anybody got one of these yet? Back in 2005. So that gives you kind of a rough estimate. Wow, yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. Um, as far as blade thickness, I don't know if I've ever measured front to tip. I put my own edge on it. I, again, I scalpeled it because this one I'm wearing is pocket jewelry nowadays. It's not a beat-up knife. It was beat-up knife when I got it. You're sitting at 3.51 for up at the shoulder. Three and a half mils. Yeah, and then down towards the tip, it comes down to 1.6. So almost in half. Yeah. So, I'm not, yeah, slicey. Um, as far as the taper goes, I'm kind of surprised <laughs> by that, actually. Um, but I guess if you look at it, you do notice the, the gradual taper all the way down, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, but man, the honorable mentions when it comes to that, like, it's, this guy right here had a, a whole bunch of knives in the running of... Yeah, all the ones that almost made it, but not quite, and how do you choose between all those ones? I wouldn't yeah. be sitting here right now being the person I am without this knife in my life, mm -hmm. and I'm no, never selling it. I, I, it's... We almost need a Dennis collection video just yes. for the viewers to understand what the turmoil was like. Because there were some knives that I, we're, we're not going to talk about now, but the, those knives, like, why didn't you choose that? Why didn't you choose that? Like, we could have a whole video dedicated to it. This honorable mention <laughs> spot... Had some like very sad knives. That, you know, <laughs> like, there could be like some editing with some like sad operatic music right the, now. The whole clocking away music. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> now, yeah. All that said, great choice. I mean, really, if you're gonna choose something that's nostalgic or runner of this, I don't know what what else you would pick. And the one complaint is what you did right there. There's actually one complaint, and it's funny because in this day and age, the holes are tampered. Yeah. Seriously chamfered on these holes, so people complain yeah, about deep. your thumb slipping off and not being able to flick it properly. Speed holes. And nowadays, people complain about spider coats being too stiff and having a too hard of a hole, and they wish they, <laughs> they were chamfered. Side by side comparison. So yeah. as far as the holes go, there's no winning. Like, this is basically just broken by sandpaper or a very, very fine file. This is literally like a 45 degree. Yeah, you can chamfer them less, I understand. There's there's a middle ground between <laughs> these two yeah. things. Like, they're they're almost touching inside the two edges. I love the fact That's that it went deep. <laughs> from, like, 0 to 10, though. You're yeah. Like, too much chamfer. All the chamfer. All the chamfer. Oh, this is what you want. <laughs> <laughs> and as far as easy construction reliability, even if I had to just rely on it, like your 801 for the number three marker, yep. it's simple, it's easy. It's Teflon washers this one too. with mm -hmm. this smooth, by the way. Teflon. Yep. Not bronze phosphor. Wow. Teflon washers. Wow. For this yeah. old I, dinosaur I, of a grail knife for me. I will say Teflon, it gets a bad rap now. If you do it right, you can do wonderful things. Hinderer yep. is a great example of Hinderer this. Hinderer certainly is, yes. But, I mean, wow, that really dates that knife. Yeah, <laughs> seriously. Like, yeah. Into an era, not even so much 2005. Just Shut like, up, man! <laughs> He's old, okay? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Old. <laughs> I, I just it's just like neat. it. It's, it's, it's nice. I just think it's neat. <laughs> All right. That leads you on oh, to... Oh, boy. What we was got Joe's honorable, honorable mention here? Yeah. So... It really came down to what I, like, just, just for a number of reasons, it couldn't be picked for one of the top three positions, but... Mm -hmm. 630. 
discontinued M390 carbon fiber titanium stainless steel insert. I love it. It is a wonderful knife. But if I can only pick three, it just it fell a little bit short. On what points? Uh, so steel was sorry. M390. M390. Wow. Yes. M390 gets an honorable mention. <laughs> only because I had this guy with S110, another ZT. But and that's really why it came down to the dividing line. Honestly, it was a it was a major uh, decision to choose between these two. Okay, what was gonna be? The number three. That's a solid knife, man. Mm -hmm. And that's why, like, it's such such a difficult decision. Um, there were nu numerous upgrades on this version as opposed to this guy, like, well, the stainless steel insert, which again, we're not entirely convinced it's necessary. Um, M390 is super stainless. It's very chip resistant. It's it's awesome overall. I was gonna dabble on the titanium frame locks because we've got a bunch of ZT sitting around the fence now. Like, yeah. They're all came out to play. Yeah, yeah. But it's and this is the only one, and it's probably the nicest lock lock. ZT yeah. that's going to be today. <laughs> well, is the one that doesn't have the carbonized steel insert. But anyway, yeah. Yeah, yeah, as far as for reasons why it falls short, and again, I love this knife. It is awesome, but. Um, the thumb disc, as opposed to a stud, as opposed to a hole or a flipper. I like deploying it. It is very fast. It's consistent. It's smooth. It's not my favorite, even so. It does get in the way of the cutting path if I am going to be doing sheer cuts through things. Um, but again, th these are all very minor nit nitpicks. Just pull the disc off and use the wave. And you, you can <laughs> yep. flick it. It is smooth enough you can do it with your thumb, but it's not as comfortable. And you, yes, you can wave it off your pocket every time. I'd rather not do that. I told you the theory behind the thumb disc, though. Remind I, me. I know I told you about it being a, a blade clash, because it was more likely to mm. trap it up into the stock, mm. and that's why it was a plate and instead of a hole or it a being an or a, mm. Because Because of the whole blade stop, because yeah. that's why he specifically put... Like, look at the Kershaw versions. Absolutely. Like his versions and I'm not faulting all. it. I'm not faulting it as a design choice, as a weapon, but <laughs> I'm not carrying this thing as a weapon. It's... The, it's fun factor that I can whip the knife out as quickly as I can. Um, again, it's nothing wrong with the knife. I love the knife. It's in my top four, but it didn't make the top three just for a few very small reasons. You did not know about the thumb, thumb plate? No, that's the new thing. I don't think I knew about that either. I, I know I had talked to Joe about it, like, I don't know, a week or so ago. We had had this about, conversation, yeah. something like that, because I had just learned it myself doing research on it. What's the material that the, the disc's made of? Like, I have softer steel? no idea. <laughs> 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 it, if it was a little bit softer, it would also bind up a little bit easier. You would guess too. it would be 416 or uh, 420 or something 316. Like that. If I were a... Well, I mean, I guess it depends. Looking at the thickness, I would think that... I thought that, oh, hey, maybe it's the same material as whatever this liner is, because I'm not sure if it's steel or not. Anybody have a magnet? No. Yeah. Anyway, um, it, it could have been a, a, just a regular old stainless steel, but... It's a beauty. Oh, perfect. Um, thickness. Oh, it oh. is It is a steel liner. Yep. Okay. Yeah, it may be the same material. Oh, yeah. thickness. Yeah. Um, yeah, you bet. It, it, sticks, it sticks right to the plate. It's not the blade that's catching it. It's definitely the... Unless yeah. it's the screw, which I doubt. I doubt it. That strong so, of a pull, yeah. probably not. Thank you. Yeah. And then as far as the thickness goes... Yeah, you were <laughs> using your flashlight as a magnet. That's okay. awesome. Well, hey, hey, it works. It's there. The Wasn't this player's flashlight of the year? Four mils. <laughs> four mils? Yeah. Wow. I love it. Yeah, <laughs> that is actually machete thick. That keeps it up until <laughs> right up near the tip where it starts to taper down very drastically. If I can stay on the thing. Uh, 1.7. So it drops over half right towards the tip, but most of that drop is right in here. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, like the last half inch. That being said, um, I did. there was a period of time where I had this instead of my Sabenza, because uh, I thought, like, you know what, I should give it a shot. Um, or rather, in addition to the Sabenza, but this was the main user. I It sliced decently well. It surprised me. And maybe it's just because of the width of the blade and how long you get to... Uh, uh, the gradual angle. It's, yeah. yeah. A it's bit more wedgy. a wide enough blade that, and then, is this a hollow or is this a saber? It's a saber. It's mm. it's flat. Yeah, this yeah, portion is it flat. It looks to be a saber, yeah, for sure. Um, but yeah, with that wide enough blade, you get enough of a taper. That's still factory edge that you just probably stropped or repolished or something like that? I've actually resharpened it uh, once now. And, and okay. that, that's all I've had to do. And since then, it's just been very light maintenance. One thing I have to say, holy crap, M390. Uh, super easy to take care of. 
-hmm. and just the rewards for taking care of it are amazing. It makes me a sad man that I don't have M390 in mm -hmm. my car. Mm -hmm. and, and there's many factors other than steel when it comes to that, but M390 is oh. one of those, yeah, yeah. The, the other reason why this got into the top four period is because it similar sort of, a, not, not to the same degree, but yep. you have that deep finger choil, then you have that sweep. Favorite features on a folding knife or a fixed blade. Like just... Watch you in. Oh mm -hmm. my goodness. And that thumb wrap. I know it's meant for <laughs> trapping bad guys' blades, but holy... Paul? Locks you in. I know you like big knives, even though you've got a smaller hand. But <laughs> the grip size. It works for me. Mm -hmm. You yeah. put it into a baseball grip, like a hammer grip. Yeah. And hang it off the back. Yeah, hang it off the back a little bit. Hang it off the front a little bit. But, I mean, I could okay. definitely use this knife. And a medium size. Yeah, that's that's a good knife, man. <laughs> and, and then hammer grip again. You hanging off the back, but nothing wrong with a little bit of a hammer in off the back, right? And it still locks you in good enough that you think you like put your thumb on there. You definitely have control on what you're pushing into, right? So, yeah, yeah. I looked at the. Is this the 620? Yes, 620. Uh, I've looked at the 630, which is the drop point version of this blade, because man, yeah. as far as a non tanto version of it. I don't even like Emerson's, and I was looking at that knife like it was a fantastic blade, right? Well, and no, yeah, I, with, with the extra big hands that I have, it's just barely mm. hanging on, so it's like comfortable like this, but considering the intent of design with this guy, I'd probably be gloved if I was using it like that, and I think with gloves on, this knife would be too small for my hands. You mean you're not in the back alley like Batman? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> you're talking about reverse wave this out of your pocket yeah. and just ice pick. <sighs> Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. There's no mom and dad sad story at the end with you have Emerson in your pocket. <laughs> in a world with Emerson, Bruce Wayne is not an orphan. <laughs> <laughs> Fair oh enough. my. Batman's not Batman. And it looks good. Yes. It's like, even without the Emerson, it's good. Yeah. 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 All right, we got honorable mentions. Is that it at all? As mm -hmm. far as what oh. we're going to say? Yep, yep. On yeah. to Paul then, I believe. Paul, what do you got? I'm curious about Paul because he put the 801 as his number three, mm -hmm. which kind of throws me a loop on this one, and there's two <laughs> or three. So, I'm going to be honest with you here, a very cheap knife almost took to place number four. I hate you. <laughs> I almost put a pillar right here. It's not a pillar. It almost happened. It's a pretty good knife. I love that knife. It's a, pillar it's a cool nice knife. little knife. You don't carry that knife nearly in that great to be even. I carry it, though. I've actually had the pillar knock this knife out of my pocket. It has knocked that out. Anyways. They need to be a better pillar. But yes. 100%. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, at the end of the day, I had to go. Yeah, I knew it. Yeah, I knew it. Yeah. I was worried that that wasn't going to make an appearance once it, once it wasn't your number uh, two. It was like, oh, it off. Okay. Had to swip it off there. <laughs> Please do the swip. Um, no. Got some schmutz. A little schmutz on my <laughs> <laughs> Had to swip the schmutz. schmutz. <laughs> like okay. the schmutz cloth. Tell me why this blade is unique, or rather why this handle is unique. It's an integral. It's all one piece. It, it was very close to being in the top three because of that. it's aluminum. Aluminum yeah. with a frame lock. Of an aluminum spring unit. And a secondary lock. And a secondary lock. But with the stainless steel insert. But aluminum with the flex, that's a mm. unique thing within itself. I'm going right? to be completely honest with you. I do not hand this knife to people that aren't knife guys because I handed it to one person once and they tried to push the lock in the wrong direction. Yeah, yeah people do I, that. Oh my goodness. And I don't, you know, titanium and stuff like that is not going to be too much of an issue. Aluminum, you ain't doing that to my knife. Nice. Mm -hmm. It comes out smooth. Have you done any maintenance, or is this still nope. factory? factory. Wow. I have the tool somewhere. Wow. <laughs> that's, that's impressive. Can we bro. talk about smoothness? The rounded spine. I mean, yeah. do we have any other smoothness? <laughs> Can we talk about oh. the thickness of that blade? Well, that too. <laughs> nope. Yeah. Nope. you, you got to bring the Slim Bowie out to play, because the spine on yeah. it is... And yeah, that is I just... I think the line steel's got to beat, but... Yeah, absolutely. And, and having the rounded spine like that is just such a nice touch to the textile feel in hand and the non-bitey aspect. Well, and it tells you a company is paying attention to detail. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, so The refinement. It's perfect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Speaking of quality awards. Can, I was going to say, yes. can we mention that line steel today, as we're recording this... 
Cool. They got themselves the Manufacturing Quality Award at the Blade Show this year. So, Yay! Uh, good for you, Lion Steel. Um, stealing it from Chris Reed. I was going to say, <laughs> like, let's pop those up. This is what lost. Yep. <laughs> for the second time ever. have yeah. been fighting for the last four years, five years. Yep. And up until that point, this guy was not in the picture. This guy had sat there the whole time. And we're not Just talking about year him. After year. Right? Yeah, and year after year after year. And then this guy... This little creepy, 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 and then she kapow. Yeah, so you got Lion Steel well, taking over. We will talk about the fact <laughs> that they have stolen the show, but can we also talk about the fact that my thumbs down are loose? No, I don't want to talk yeah. about that because I don't care. It's an awesome night. It's an awesome night. Even with the thumbs it just loose. bumps me out. I know. Yeah. And, and I think that can get picked up on the camera, so it's probably really annoying. So I'm going to stop that now. <laughs> Oh, yeah, blade thickness. Let's talk about the thickness of the blade. I'm curious, because it doesn't have much of a taper, but again, on the beach, they call it the secondary mm. That's right, there's one of those things. It's all about the secondary <laughs> This thing got <laughs> shipped to Canada yeah. as a camp tool. Of course that, it is. I love the fact that it was shipped as a camp tool. I think you could use this as a camp Ooh. tool. Oh, I definitely could. How thick? But I'm not going to. Like, my buddy uses a Kirchhoff blur, and this would kick the crap. So if we thought that that Joe Z T there was thick. Four mils? What do we got? Six? Four and a half. There you go. Half. Okay, cool. Six. <laughs> <laughs> Whose and world do you live in? <laughs> my own. <laughs> Up towards the tip, we're sitting at like just under two, like 1.9. Wow. 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 Yeah, like. It's well, man, the and tip. Let's go back to where that was, where the taper starts here. <laughs> okay. And goes to here. Well, let's talk, talk about how wide that blade is. So the taper is really nice. Mm -hmm. hey, we were talking about grind starting at particular positions. This starts about the halfway point. I know they're trying to, you know, keep the blade stronger for when you're stabbing, but look at the lion steel. You have the blade grind starting way the hell mm -hmm. up here. Yeah, that's awesome. It's if almost you're looking a for a good cutter. No, but the problem is, is that's for stabbing. Well, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> well. The, the, uh, I guess the, the, most, the, the most no. important reason why this made number four and not number three is the blade steel. D2. It's a D2. D2. It's, it's nice steel. Oh, okay. I, but I got to dabble on be, Nigel's knife picks of yeah. XHP being the high end, yeah. which is the equivalent, they say, of a stainless D2. And then we got a BG10 and an S30. Yep. So a D2 doesn't make the ranking it, no matter how much joy it gives you. It just doesn't quite make it there. Okay. Which is interesting because, really, like you're talking about, when LMAX first came out, they're like, oh, this is the new stainless D2. And now XHP is the stainless D2, and now people are saying it's S35, but... This I would, would have beat the A to 1 for me. Fair Knowing enough. your collection, this would have been number 3. It it was very close. And something else would have been honorable mention. <laughs> quite quite but, frankly, this was on the list until we got almost here for the first video. Fair enough. And I knocked it out. How does it fit in your hand? I have a feeling that plays a part of why it wasn't mm -hmm. in the top three I understand three as well. that, but that can maybe be a one of an individual thing. It very well might be. I was gonna if say, anybody out in the audience there knows how I can fix that, if there's if it's screwed in or if it's a press fit, or if it's a know. consistency thing, if yeah. it happens all the time or if it's just yeah. falls. Yes, yes please, thing. anybody who's played with these, let us know. We don't have enough experience with Lion Steel. How Our does it fit in Nigel's hand? I find it small. It's, um, and it's the big guy. Which is it's a gunny nice. handle? Yeah, yeah, because of how... Your hands are insane. Your hands are, are insane. But because of how deeply this is contoured and how much it sucks your hand in, it's very... puts you into a spot, and okay. my hand doesn't fit into that spot. It puts Something you... we haven't tried yet, which normally works on most knives, but pinch grip. Um, with the wideness of the blade, I don't know if I'd be pinch gripping it that much. Just because the blade style... index finger on the end? Um... Yeah, that's not too bad. It's comfy. And, okay, this that's is going to come into play potentially in a future episode. For reference. Uh, where we're large large at... hands. I wear a large glove. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but in hammer grip, Joe. Oh, oh, in hammer grip? Yeah. Oh, I it's love it. It's not your knife. Okay. This is great. Saber grip? Saber grip, pinch grip. I, and I love using knives like this, <laughs> but thumb on the pivot, not up here. Okay. I like it. I don't know. I, I yeah. yeah. Hammer grip. It's still, it's still so right I can hang off the back. Mm -hmm. My pinky so small. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's saber grip as well. No, but take into account, though, and push that into the push pillar out. almost knocked that out. Which is nuts to me. I mean, it's a good knife, but I mean... You geez. are crazy, sir. <laughs> you... I dropped clothes. Uh-huh. This That's only the manufacturing knife of the year with how much of a weight? 
Oh, you can't. <laughs> you gotta let it set first. You're a set. Sometimes. What? <laughs> <laughs> five ounces. Like, okay. exactly five ounces. That's what the, the same hell? as a Slutus Bowie. Yeah. At the end of it all. That's barely more I love this knife. Though. Don't get me wrong. I do. Um, can we take a quick second to talk about that grind? That, like, apple seed, the way that they... It's nice. Took the secondary? Quality manufacturing. <laughs> My Italian heritage is yelling at me right now. <laughs> Absolutely. No, I mean, I'm glad it made it into your top four. Because I, I really am jealous that you have Alliance Steel like this, and even with the spinny thumb studs, it still deploys pretty well. I don't think there's much else to say I, about it. I have yeah. one line steel in my collection, and I have a hard time not carrying it every day. And it's nothing like this knife. Oh, that's beautiful. And it'll come out to play in a couple episodes, probably. We're going to show and tell something really cool <laughs> in the future. Um, it does make its uh, way under my Instagram fairly often. This guy here? Yeah, it sure does. Yeah. It's really beautiful color. I mean, oh, it's that red. Yeah. It's the most colorful out of all these knives, I think. Oddly yeah. enough. Except Except maybe, maybe carbonized steel insert as well? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, for the honorable mention. But just look into the fact. Like, look at the... My Remember, collection is colorful. I've seen Dutch Bushcraft Boys spark off of Lion Steel's rounded They're fixed spines. Ones. Because they still have enough of a corner yeah. right on the edge here that they're still getting sparks, which is awesome that you can have that much of just a beautiful thumb feel, and I'm going to call it the thumb feel. Yeah, but that's what it is. And, and still get the Dutch bushcrafty sharpness of a condor knife or we, an Oppenel or whatever. If you follow my Instagram, Amora. come and check it out. I'm going to try with this guy to see if I can spark with it. Oh, well, I hope I hope you can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah for sure. You, you've got a sweet fire steel, so well, everyone exactly check it. that out, for sure. Are we done with that bad boy? I think boy? so. I All right, so. let's rock this shit. So, for my honorable mention, the Zero Tolerance 456. There it is. Thank God. There's <laughs> a knife that is dirty, dirty. Size. We really, much We really expected this to be in the top three. I was expecting yeah. number one. Um, it, oh, the main man, reason is... This weirded me up so <laughs> This is what belongs in here. <laughs> so, why this guy made it into the honorable mention instead of the Crooked River is the style of this guy. Is The styling on it is so beautiful. I love all the 3D milling on it. What took it out, though, is... Going back to, I was going to gentleman the hell out of this new world, and I find this guy a bit too <laughs> tanky of a knife to fit that role that I was going with. Who makes this knife? I mean, not ZT. Who, uh, who designed this uh, Sinkovich design. Mr. I love Sinkovich. Mr. Dimitri. Of course, Mr. Yep. Dimitri. And <laughs> That's why I like it so much. is oh, absolutely God. phenomenal. 20 it, CV on the steel, and yep. again, last week I pulled out the Greptilian and said I was in love with 20 CV. I... I Freaking mean it! I am love with twenty yep. CV. It is a wonderful steel. If the if if I had to consider or if I paid more consideration to steel choice in this little game here, this probably would have been more of an option just because of the steel in it. Once again, carbonized steel insert. Again, I think it's a smart move. For what a they're staple for. in ZT's market is reliability, and that will give you the right reliability you're looking for. I'm gonna tell you right now. I will own this knife. It will end up in my collection, not this one, but one will end up in my collection one day, and it is going to be disgusting, the number of colors that I put into it. <laughs> okay. Out of spite to you. you mean, that's awesome, because you won't touch my gray, boring, beautiful, beautiful knives. Do we want to talk about Dimitri getting his own he little mid-year release this year with a knife very similar to, while we're on this topic, because it's new and fresh. Yep, from Spyderco. Oh, man. The Spyderco is called the Drunken, and yep. it's brand new. It's got a really, really cool wave pattern on the titanium on the one side, and then the same cool wave pattern is on the carbon fiber mm, on the other I side am as well. Very intrigued by it. As far as this guy goes, fits my fits my hand great in a saber. Uh, well, that's weird. I don't like it in a pinch. I would probably yeah. just use it's it. It's a little too chubby for the a pinch. Little you chubby. Really, really up there. Like get mm -hmm. right in there and oh, maybe yeah. use some tip. But most knives, right? like yeah. 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 For sure. Um, 2016 release, so relatively new in the knife world compared to a full, lot of the four other finger grip for me. Yeah. yeah. Hammer grip for you, got a full finger. Yeah. And again, the flipper. I don't mind the flipper because the handle like just fills it out nice. But it's, it's a fairly small, flat. It's not Subtle. pokey and yeah. 
It's and not it, obnoxious. And anyway. it fits the design really well when it is open. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. And even when it's closed, again, not obnoxious. Mm -hmm. More blowing smoke, but uh, yeah, Dimitri, holy crap, man. Blue. You're... That blue. I saw some prototypes where I think the blue like, is a little bit different. It's almost I'm, the same blue. I, I'm almost. glad they matched it up. Yeah, we've mm -hmm. got a theme going, for sure. Mm -hmm. So, uh, honorable mentions. Um, let's get them up. Let's let's show them. Uh, slide that. Yeah, yeah. Know your corner. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have to know your role. We're going to have to remember this from week to week. Um... That's some good looking knives Moon for Chow. honorable mention. Mm -hmm. I mean, the top three and everyone's top three is awesome. Um, but even the honorable mentions, you can put that in anyone's top three, and I think anyone would be happy with that top three as yeah. far as those knives go. 100%. Um, and, and we're going a little over, but I don't care if we've got one quick yep. question for sure. everyone. Out of what's sitting here right now, what would you steal? Oh, from somebody else? You bet. Yes. Right there. Is Stole. it 456? Yep. Really? Over a Semenza? Yep. Okay. Okay, that's that's Paul Steele. That's Paul Steele. Um, this is harder for me than I... Than Paul I, I know. I want this one right now. I'm thinking... Yeah, I'd probably take the line steel. I wouldn't let you take the Semenza, but yeah. I will take the line steel. You don't have a choice in what... Yeah, yeah, this, <laughs> isn't, this isn't an <laughs> issue, issue know, of I letting. I know, I know, obviously, but it's... The only hesitance I have is because it's not a dual thumb stud, but out of the options here... It might be this guy or Paul's, but I think it's that guy. You buy that, you sell it, you get one with a left hand thumb stud. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna show off that pivot. Yeah, mm -hmm. we do. Yeah, we do. You know, it's hard for me right now between this and the Savenza. I'm gonna be honest. That's that's the two I have struggles with is because the collectability on this is absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. And the S110 and the lightning bolt composite blade is, this is a grail knife for so many people. So is that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. But yeah, I've got two grail knives in my collection. I have to go, <laughs> yeah. I have to go with the Spenza. Now, what I love about what just happened here is none of you took what I have to offer here. I um, was kind of, I was partially considering the 940, but... The Sliz Bowie was close. Yep, absolutely. But I I have contemplated buying this knife more than once. I don't have an aluminum frame lock. <laughs> <laughs> integral the, frame the lock. The aluminum integral. Yeah, the know, integral. The Sliz Bowie did. Yeah, did. Manufacturer's quality award. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay, let's put yep, those yep. two knives. Okay, so we're going to do a direct comparison. Because I'm questioning see. Joe with his pick right now. Sure. I, don't ever, I can understand the 456. I understand yep, it. Yep. I understand the semantic because that's what I picked as well. But you have... Do you see how pretty that is? Me being neglected over here, questioning a, a freaking awesome that's knife. Nice. <laughs> Honestly, it was between these two. The reason, A couple reasons why. I like D2. I like D2 a lot. I... Yes, it's awesome. I love it. I want more of it. It's an aluminum integral frame lock. I don't have either of those things. I don't have a Neat lion factor. steel. This nerd factor. It's cool. That's even with the even with the, and, the, the weird thumb studs. And yes. I was gonna throw in the with with the nerd factor. I'm gonna throw in the carbon fiber Osborne, and mm. not because it's the carbon fiber Osborne, but because Joe has an Osborne. Yeah. So and much. Paul has an Osborne, and they did not come out to play on yeah. any. It, one of no. these guys' knives. If this one hadn't gotten finished, it would have been in the, in the running. This was quoted as EDC knife overall type of thing. That's Liz Bowie, honestly. Number two to this. All right, all right. And that's that should be all she wrote. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I think that rounds up our little game here nicely. I hope that everyone will like, comment, subscribe, share, do what you can to spread this out and help us grow it. Feel free to donate on Patreon. That page is up and running now. Follow us on Instagram. That too as well, yeah. I guess on Instagram we're going to check out the uh, individual pages. I am who I am. I'm Dennis Vipers. The Iron Joe. Uh, XL.ca. I am Nigel B. Smith. And yeah. 
give us as many ideas as you can for new videos coming up. Mm -hmm. Hopefully we'll have some new knives coming out in the next couple weeks, uh, some new reviews. If there's yep. any kind of themes for reviews you guys want to see, anything like that, definitely let us know. We, we are brainstorming, but it, hey, if somebody wants to see something, we'll see we what do we like interacting, so feel free to share your ideas and give us messages and feedback and whatnot. Hope it's been fun for you guys. I hope you like yeah. what we've got in the collection. I hope we can That's bring you more. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So yeah, that'll be that for this week. Catch you all again next time. Cool.